Guys, you may have joined me for the last video where I processed this rather flat image and converted it into a nice, much more dramatic black and white in Lightroom. But for me, the image wasn't finished there because when I was actually on location, I really wanted to create a long exposure image. In order to do this, you need your shutter open for a long period of time and you need to have a neutral density filter. Unfortunately, I didn't have my 10 stop neutral density filter with me, but all was not lost because using a simple technique in Adobe Photoshop, which I'm gonna share with you in this video, I was able to convert that image into this. And I think if you didn't know that this was shot with a fast shutter speed, you would be fooled into thinking that this was a long exposure photo. Now the ethics of whether you should or shouldn't actually treat your photos in this way, that's a completely different debate that I'm not gonna get into in this video, but I merely present to you a technique that allows you to emulate long exposure photography in Adobe Photoshop. So let's take a look. Now I did video the whole process of me editing this in Photoshop, but it was an extremely lengthy process and that made for a very long video. And so what I've decided to do is just share with you guys each of the layers, what I've done on those layers and why I've done it and how we've ultimately gone from this image here to this image here. And in the process, I'm gonna show you a really great technique for replicating long exposures. So the very first thing I wanted to do was actually retouch the sand and I basically used the spot healing brush tool just to zoom in and paint over all of these little footsteps and any twigs and basically anything that would catch your eye and took away from the sense of a nice soft clean sand. So just an example of that working is me using the tool and just literally painting over. So when I'd finished retouching the sand using that tool, we were left with a nice clean image here along the bottom of our photo. Now the next step was blurring the sky and that for me was the most defining element within the whole of the composition to actually help to create my, my vision of what I saw when I first took the photo. So if I hide that, we'll see our before and then we'll see our after. Now, if I run any kind of motion blur in Photoshop, it's just gonna smear the pixels. Um, that's ultimately what it's doing and take no regard for what those pixels are. So I needed to remove the peer before I actually ran the blur filter. So to do that, all I did was literally get the selection tool, the lasso tool, and I drew a really rough selection around the bridge. It honestly was just down and right dirty kind of selection, no real attention paid to it whatsoever. I just wanted to remove it and hopefully Photoshop was going to replace the background with, with some sky. Once I'd run the selection, all I needed to do was remove it and I used the content aware fill um, tool. So basically go to shift F5, content aware, click OK, and then you just hope like hell that Photoshop is smart enough to replace your peer with Sky. And it's done a pretty poor job there, to be honest. Um, the first time I ran that, um, the algorithm did a much better job, but you can keep um, making adjustments. If you come to the patch tool here, you can then grab from other, other areas where, let's just grab a nice smooth bit there. We really don't need to be too precise with this. We just want to uh, create a nice little smooth area of sky as if the pier were not there. I will show you the individual layers following this much, much quicker, but I really want to dive into this tool here for creating motion blur and show you how if you don't unfortunately have a neutral density filter on you or even own one, this is a way that you can fake that technique in Photoshop. So what we can do is come into filter, come to blur gallery, and in the blur gallery, we've got path blur. And that allows us to actually define a motion for our the, the movement for our clouds or whatever we're wanting to blur. So what we can do is actually use the arrow to match the motion, the direction of those clouds. And over here we've got a speed, so we can actually make that blur more or less. 
And one of the great things that you can do with this tool is actually put multiple arrows on there. So along the horizon line, we may have more of a horizontal left right shift. And as you come up towards the corner of the, the frame and further away from the horizon line, the clouds are going to start to be moving more closer to, closely to a vertical direction. You can even go as far as actually bending the arrows so that you can really finesse the curvature of these blurs. The other thing that I'd like you to take note of within this tool that's really powerful is you can select an endpoint and actually reduce or increase the amount of that blur at that endpoint. So you can start your blur with less and as it comes up to the corner of the frame, you can actually increase the blur. So that is basically how I created the motion within the clouds. I also used the same technique on the C, but I just went for a left right blur on the C. So let's click OK on this and now the path blur filter will run. It takes a little while because it is very computationally heavy, but boom, the results are worth it. Prior to running that, I would have cleaned this area up here a little bit, but here is the actual version that I created for my finished piece. So not too much in it, but I was just a little bit more careful and more refined with the controls of the path blur. Let's move on. As I mentioned, I did the same thing for the C. So we've got a left right blur there and I've just used a mask just to feather that effect in at the foreground. Now, it's certainly not a perfect uh, representation of what you would get if you use a neutral density filter on the C. I think the clouds work much, much better. But in this instance, it's about as good as I could get. So I'm happy with that. Now, all we need to do is reintroduce the pier. So that was just a case of using a selection to go around the pier and then just reintroduce it over the top on its own layer. So if we just isolate that layer, there you go. You can see that's our pier that we just added back over the top of our otherwise blurred image. And already you can see that we've got a nice artistic kind of feel to this image. And I really like that. Now I did feel that the pier was just kind of floating a wee bit into the sea so I wanted to ground it and I was going to do that with shadows so the best way for doing that in my opinion was to add a blank grey layer just pure grey change it to overlay mode and then paint black so this is the effect that we got and if we look so I'm just popping that off and on but if we look at what that layer actually looks like it's pretty messy, but it's just the addition of black on a gray layer and the uh, the result that we got with that. While we are talking about gray layers, I just want to bring to your attention just how powerful they are for using as dodge and burn layers. So if I actually show you this layer here, look at this. I've just painted white over this uh, neutral gray layer and changed it to a soft light. So soft light and overlay are the best blending modes to use, in my opinion, for dodge and burn techniques. So in this one, I've just done a dodge layer, so I'm brightening. So I've painted brighter areas where I want to brighten the image. And as you saw when I just show you that layer on its own, it's a pretty rough and ready kind of painting, right? And I just did that with my Wacom tablet and I just gently, with a low flow, just painted over the areas I wanted to brighten. And conversely, with the layer above it, I did the opposite. I created another neutral gray layer and then painted black onto that. So let's have a look at that. So without it and with it, I just wanted to darken that left edge. Um, so I definitely wanted a brighter right hand side and a darker left hand side. And that would help to keep our eye more on this area of interest of the pier itself. One technique I really like is to actually paint directly onto a layer um, with no overlay mode, no blending mode, just in normal mode. And what I've done here, if we have a look at this layer, um, it's really hard to see, but I've basically just painted, if I drop in, let's say a bright red underneath it, you'll see this, I've painted white in the top right hand corner. Again, very subtle, um, but there is just a little bit of white up here. So if I now hide that color fill, and we'll just turn all of these layers back on and you'll see that light bleed in, in action. So that's without it and that's with it. So you can basically just get a really big fat paintbrush just with say a 10% opacity. Um, you can use your bracket keys to make that paintbrush as big as you can and just do a couple of dabs in that corner and that creates just a nice emulation of light bleeding in from that right hand corner. Really nice technique.
If you saw part one of this editing process where I did my black and white Lightroom conversion, you would have also seen that I ran a filter on it called Luminar. So I also used that plugin again, just to create details in the pier itself, because I actually really wanted to make sure that if people were eyeballing the pier, they were seeing a nice bit of detail. So if I turn that off and on, I've just added contrast and detail, like there's not much in it, it's really subtle um, and you can barely notice uh, from a distance, but if I turn that off and on, uh, it's just darkening that pier up nicely and just grabbing your attention more and I really like that. But the next thing I did was actually rerun Luminar and actually use one of my favourite filters or, or tools that are within that and that's the mystical filter. So let me turn that on and off and on and off and you'll see that's super subtle because I used it just like a really light sprinkling like a like a chef adding something to a recipe you know you're not overdoing it it's just a little something something um, so there we go that's the mystical filter when I'm working with Lightroom or Photoshop I'll often finish my image off with Luminar because it just allows me to elevate my work um, to that next level and it's become an invaluable part of my workflow so if you guys want to get yourself a copy of that there's a link in the description and I've also got a discount code that you're more than welcome to use and that is at sky10 so go for gold um, I love using it and I'm sure you will too uh, my next layer that I went to was uh, this one here and I'm just basically retouching the birds. If I turn that off and on, you can't even really see it at that resolution, but if I zoom in and I turn that off, look on the pier here, there are just a few birds that I just removed. So they're gone and the same on the beach as well, there were just a couple of birds and there's one. Um, and I thought if we're having a long exposure, the fact that there are birds staying absolutely stationary kind of belies the believability of it. So off, there's a bird and on, he's just cloned out. Actually, I didn't use the clone tool. I rarely use that, I use spot healing brush. So the next thing was, I just wanted to blur the sea just a little bit more, just soften that up. So I just created a little blur of the sea and um, masked that in where I wanted it. To create the final image, we just had two steps left. And that was to create a curves layer, which if I double click that, you'll see what that's doing. It's basically boosting up the highlights, really, really boosting up the highlights and making sure that we push to pure white here. So that is not pure white and we're just starting to hit pure white around there. So I brought the pure whites up and I just decreased the shadows ever so slightly. So if, if I pull that down, you can see what that's doing. That's creating a really dark and moody image. So I wanted to head in that direction, but just do it with a little more of a finessed kind of feel. And the very, very last step that I did was to add some film grain. You may have seen that when we zoom in around the pier, you can see that the original image before the blur has actually got some of the original camera noise still showing. So a way to hide that is to actually create a layer of film grain and put that over the whole image and as a fine art piece that is in black and white I'm more than happy to do that um, it just creates a, a more filmic kind of look to the image and I'm very pleased with that so now let's turn on our completed image and I'm really pleased with that let's press F to go full screen and let's press tab to get rid of the palettes and there we go that's our finished image Taking our original photograph and processing it through Lightroom and then bringing that black and white conversion into Photoshop has enabled us to emulate a nice long exposure look through the clouds. And this finished image is much more akin to the vision that I had in my mind when I was taking the shot. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of these techniques. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers guys, stay safe.